So in Vedic astrology, the planetary relationships is the probably the most important concept when it comes to determining whether a planet is healthy or unhealthy. And essentially each planet, think about it as a force within your consciousness, and each one has an, an agenda. So each planet treats every other planet as a friend, as an enemy, or as a neutral to that agenda. So if you have a planet that's friendly to you, they're helping you fulfill that agenda, or they're helping that force within your consciousness express itself more fluidly. And just the opposite with, the, with an enemy planet. It makes the expression of that planet much more difficult or more rigid, and they cause all types of different effects. These are called the Lajitati Avashtas, and I go into depth in each Lajitati Avashta in my written report. So if you want to know what yours are, the states of your planets and their agendas, you can find my written report at jmvedic.com. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the sun's friends and how they support a healthy expression of the solar consciousness and essentially how they're going to make the solar part with the solar aspect within you to really flourish and express itself very vibrantly. So the sun has three friends or the sun treats three other planets as its friends and they are the moon, Mars and Jupiter. So we're going to see how when these planets are influencing the sun, how a person can better embody the, so, the healthy solar characteristics. So let's start with the moon. So the divine feminine, the moon, it supports the divine masculine, the sun, through the power of intuition, which is telling the solar aspect of our consciousness whether the inspiration that we're following with our solar part, whether that is right for us. So we're using the lunar consciousness to put ourselves in a position, and we do this every day, all day long, in order to get our needs met and whatever we believe those needs to be. So in a word, the moon is essentially helping us to adapt to the world around us. And it does this through our intuition. So the moon, therefore, is helping the sun to adapt to the struggles, to the speed bumps and obstacles, and the positive developments that happen as we're pursuing our ambition and as we're building the strong, fortified kingdom around us, the world around us. So becoming a pure expression of our soul, what the solar consciousness is pushing us to do throughout our life, it's not this straight, direct path. There are all these twists and turns and totally unexpected things that happen on that, that long-term journey. So it's the moon's power of intuition and adaptability which helps steer us when we're on that journey. And since the moon is about getting our needs met, it's this intuitive voice within us that's telling the sun yes or no, whether something will fulfill what we need to do in the immediate way and also in the larger scheme of things. So this, the, it's kind of like a steering wheel and it's, a, it's that voice in our head that says yes or no, that this is right, this feels, this feels wrong, et cetera, as we're living that solar journey, as we're following our inspiration and our ambition. This is how the moon really helps the sun move along that long and winding road of life. So when a big decision comes up, and you're adding up the pros and cons of why you should or shouldn't do something and why something will work or why it won't work or how to go ahead on whatever you're doing. It's the moon, the queen to the king in our consciousness that at the end of the day says yes or no to it. So even though the sun, it's, the, it's an, a part of us that's very intelligent in the logical sense, as I said, putting those pros and cons and and seeing logically why something will or won't work. But at the end of the day, if the queen, your intuition says, nope, it's not gonna work, I know you've added up, there's 15 pros and one con, but at the end of the day, if there's that intuitive sense that it won't work, it's that voice, the queen, the moon part of you, that intuitively tells you that this is the wrong decision to be made. So it's really important to always be having that, that ability to listen to that intuitive voice and be able to hear that intuitive voice in you. It's the lunar consciousness that won't be able to measure everything up intelligently, but has a holistic understanding of how something will or won't work out. So the moon within us is the emotional center of our existence. So when the moon is supporting the sun with a conjunction or with a, with a, usually with a full moon, so a strong opposition, or the sun is in cancer, our soul's divine mission in life, 
feels really good when we're doing it. And we are really able to intuit the messages that our soul want, needs to be hearing. And that's the moon being able to communicate strongly and give those strong messages to the sun, to our, our more logical part of ourself. And it's like being able to read the signs around us to see if we're on the right path or not. And when we're not on the right path, the healthy moon is helping the sun to adapt much quicker and to not overthink the situation. So we all find ourselves straight off or lost on a certain point in life or at a certain situation. A healthy moon supporting the sun or the solar consciousness receiving the help from the moon, it's able to get over and adapt to that, that say negative situation or that bad environment quicker. But without the moon helping the sun like that, a person's much slower to, to get back on the right track, maybe because they're not listening to the inner voice or they neglected their voice, their intuitive voice that said this wasn't ever going to work out no matter how much you thought it would. And the person adapts much more slow, slowly to trying circumstances. So now another interesting example about how the sun and the moon working together and how the moon can help the solar consciousness. So let's say that we're living our life and we're doing the best that we can to live our soul's mission and everything seems to be going just fine and you're making a ton of money, people around you are validating you and everything, you've got all of the things that create what people would call a successful life. But at the end of the day, you don't feel good at all about what you're doing. You don't feel good. As I said, the, the moon is the core of our, of our emotional center. And this is a very common problem for very su materially successful people who are being validated by the world around them, their environment, and they have big bank accounts and big houses and they have very influential friends. But at the end of the day, they're some of the most unhappy people alive. And this is what is happening is that this is the lunar force. This is the moon's, the moon consciousness within you telling the sun that there's something not quite right about what you believe your soul's mission is. And that what is happening is that their person has this yearning to express something else in their life, despite all the successes that they're currently living as. So it's this intuitive part of us that says that there's something just off and there's something that you're not completing in your life's mission. You're not fully living what you're here to do what your soul wants to express. And it's basically the queen telling the king to get his act together and to see that despite what things are successfully happening in your life externally, there's something not right about it. And that's why you feel bad or that's why you feel incomplete. Your emotional center is giving you a message. It's the queen telling the king that you need to change course and adapt to something different. Otherwise, you're going to be going down that emotionally, you're going to have that nagging emotional, uh, that kind of sense within you that there's something that is just not right. And so it's the emotional part of you that you need to start focusing on and addressing why you're having that, why that feeling, what that feeling is telling you and why, what's causing that feeling. So now let's talk about how Mars is a friend of the sun. So when you have the sun within you setting this path forward to life, and this is what we're going, this is what I'm going to do because it's my soul expressing itself. You don't just start right away one day and you're living your best possible life. There's this entire process involved because there's obstacles to, and there are problems that just need to get solved. When you realize that this is, this is where my life is leading me and this is what my soul wants to express. So that's when Mars comes into play, when Mars steps up, that part of your consciousness. It's Mars is the planet that we use to very simply to get things done. So when the king says, the, the ruler of yourself, your soul is says, we're going to do this, then he has to rely on other parts of your consciousness to carry out the work itself because the king doesn't do everything himself. Think about the president. He doesn't actually go off and do all of the work it means to lead the country or the king. He has to rely on all these other people to actually do what he's saying that needs to get done. He makes the decision, but he doesn't actually go off and do every single thing that he wants to be done. So let's use a really simple example in daily life. So say you've been working all morning on whatever you're passionate about 
and then you get hungry and say that day you want to eat a hamburger and you, but you don't have any hamburger supplies in your house. So how do you get that hamburger into your stomach so you have enough energy to continue working on your passion for the rest of the afternoon? So there's this command being sent from the king. I need fuel to continue working on this passion. Mars, the role of Mars in our consciousness is to implement a logical strategy to move forward with those orders. So to fulfill that command, I need to first stand up and then exert energy walking to the store to go buy those items and then to come home, cook those items, etc. And we're using other parts of our consciousness as well, Mercury and Venus, to analyze the different options, to make a decision, etc. But it's that strategy aspect of it. The Mars saying, I'm going to solve this problem of hunger so that the sun can get back to expressing its passion. And this strategy in order to in order to solve the problem is Mars coming into the game and saying, all right, this is how we're going to do it. And we're doing this all the time in all different parts of our experience. We, we do this process all the time on a very small scale, like being hungry and on a large scale. I have this goal. How am I going to actually do that goal? So a more complex way of looking at it, it's say you decide, oh, okay, I love doing massage therapy. I want to make massage therapy my career. This is my passion. You need to come up with a plan of action, this step-by-step -step process of solving the problem of, okay, right now I'm making $200 a month doing massages. I want to turn that into $2,000 a month. So it's that, how do I actually do that? And that is a quote unquote problem, but it's Mars to come up with this step-by-step -step logical process in order to get that done and resolve that problem of turning $200 to $2,000. So just like all of the planets, Mars is very multifaceted and it's a very fascinating planet, but in relation to the sun and how it helps the sun, it's this physical resource to get things moving forward to solve that goal. And it's solving these immediate and also long-term and complex problems related to that goal. So the sun, while the sun is about this consistency and hard work, it doesn't, isn't the part of us that's resolving the problems on that path. Kind of how the moon is helping the sun to steer itself through intuition. And when it feel, when you're feeling good about what you're doing, the moon is saying, yep, I feel great doing this. That's the moon's uh, job helping the sun. The sun gets help from Mars by actually on the ground, day-to-day -day problem solving of that path itself. And the kind of, I like the word strategy a lot when it comes to Mars. To real, it's like a, uh, you can think of Mars as kind of like a chess player. So it's the part of us that's adjusting to obstacles on the way to get to that goal. And winning or being successful in life or at any kind of task to the larger plan requires that strategy, thinking ahead. So Mars is most commonly associated with a warrior because it's the, it's the, a warrior is the ultimate problem solver of, of any conflict because who would ever want to lose uh, a war? So the ultimate conflict, the ultimate problem is this physical combat. And so that's the ultimate, but Mars is the part of us that is uh, dealing with conflicts of interest. I want this, but I don't have it yet. How do I resolve that conflict? And so also don't forget it's that Mars exalts the sun. It's, it's uh, Mars's sign Aries where the sun is in the best position in the chart. So if your sun is strong and healthy, but your Mars is very weak, you can have this big ambition and this, this, grand, uh, this grand plan for your life. And you, are, you don't have this fear and you want this true, you want your true expression to be, to be of your soul to really come out. But since Mars is weak, when it comes to those practical things, these underground daily struggles and having to take care of the of things that are getting in your way and having a good ability for strategy and problem solving, the person gets caught up in the weeds. They're indecisive or they're, the plan is just half baked and it's just a poorly laid out plan or you run out of physical energy to actually go complete it. So you can have a big vision, you can have a great sun, but when Mars is not there to help out the sun or Mars is weak in general, the actual doing it gets hindered and the result, the ambition doesn't get resolved and your ambitions don't feel as completed because the Mars part of you is not helping the sun in the way it's supposed to be helping the sun. To do that kind of chess playing, to do that, okay, if I do this, then this, 
and what's the smartest way to carry this out, etc. So to really understand Mars, I would recommend you watch my video, The Astrology of the Art of War, Mastery of Mars. And it shows how Sun Tzu was this excellent embodiment of what Mars is in your consciousness. And one of the phrases within the art of war, in a paraphrased way, is that the greatest tactician or the, the best way to win a war is without fighting at all. So don't people make this mistake of seeing Mars as this fighter or this warrior, this angry part inside of us. It is that to an extent. But Mars, when it's really healthy and when it's really help, helping the sun, it's this ability to intelligently create a plan that solves a problem for the sun using as little energy as possible, like winning a war without even having to fight. Because there's always going to be another conflict waiting for us around the corner. And it's a tough world that we live in. And so conserving our energy is an excellent way to have that long, uh, have the long vision and to be able to do things over the long term. So Mars is all about that efficiency and being able to handle things without having to overexert because we end up getting tired too fast. So Mars, when it's being logical, is also being very efficient. So when the sun and Mars are both very strong, you're going to get this person who is not just very ambitious, but also has this drive and this tenaciousness, this tenacity and intelligence to put the project together, to put the life's project together in a very efficient, uh, in a very efficient and practical way. So the third friend of the sun is Jupiter. And we've been talking about how the sun is this force within us of this awareness of our soul's unique mission, then building up throughout life, this ability to become a pure expression of our unique soul's mission. So Jupiter is this planet of this higher purpose that's very similar to the sun. But the sun has this singular motivation. I'm doing this because it's what's most important to me and it's this high priority for me. When the sun and Jupiter are working together very well, that singular motivation of the sun and that passion, it gets placed into the larger context of creation. So what you do has meaning to other people and it's not just yourself. Even though you're coming from this singular passion to get things done, and to do and to live a life where you're expressing your unique mission. But when Jupiter is helping out, you can see how that mission of your soul relates in a positive way to everybody else. And that you see this harmony between yourself and the rest of the world, and even on a more abstract level. So it's abstract in the sense that it's not that you're seeing, oh, I'm helping the world this, this, and this, and this, and like a checklist. But you see that your work and your soul's mission Ha, from when you see it from a larger bird's eye view, you may not know exactly what you're doing to help the world, but you can sense that it's creating a positive effect of the world around you. And it can be in a very subtle way. So Jupiter is the ultimate benefic planet, which means that it brings the most enjoyable things in life that makes our life feel like it's worth living. So Jupiter brings these great positive things into our life, such as wealth or enough money so that you can be free to not have to think about money all the time. Jupiter is the planet of wealth, the planet of finance. Finance in the sense of being able to build abundance of, of, of resources in your life. And Jupiter also is a benefic planet because it gives that sense of creativity, that something that comes from deep within you. And the most important part of, of Jupiter is that sense of positivity that comes from that. When your life has direction, you feel the goodness of of what you're doing flowing through you. So when the sun is getting helped by Jupiter, you're able to live the expression of your divine soul and it's feeling really good doing it. And it gives that great positive benefit and you are similar to the moon, how the moon is intuitively guiding you. Jupiter gives that benefit, that strong positive feeling that what you're doing, it's benefiting other people. Very importantly, I can feel that goodness flowing through me and good things are compounding in my life. And the more you do something, the more you're living out your son and Jupiter's helping, the more you can feel the goodness growing and expanding in your auric field or in your life in general. But living your role as the soul expressing itself purely, it doesn't always mean that great things are going to happen. 
and you can feel good within you, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all of a sudden, all of these benefit, great things are going to happen. Jupiter's just going to bring all of these great things that happen into your life, a ton of wealth, a ton of um, friends, influence, etc. And think about the, the experience of an investigative journalist. So these are people, they're very brave people because they're really going up against the most powerful corporations, and the most powerful people in the world. And so imagine if you're living your best life, you're living your soul's passion. And as you do that, you're creating, a host, you're creating hostility towards you by doing what you do. And so these, so that hostility, they can actually be taking money from you and you might get thrown in jail which is the absolute opposite of abundance. And I even saw a quote recently that said, the highest level or the most successful level of being an investigative journalist is being murdered by the CIA, which is really dark when you think about it. And it's more complicated than that, but you understand that that person is not getting those benefit things that are happening to them that Jupiter does as they're living their inspired life. So an investigative journalist who has Sun and Jupiter working together in their chart, this person sees that even though they're causing themselves a lot of trouble and hostility towards them, it's still worth it to get the word out and put, in, put their effort forward to help the rest of humanity. They see that their contribution to bringing dark truths about powerful people into the light of day they see that mission that they have in the bigger context and that they may not physically survive this ordeal personally, but that other people are going to benefit in somehow or some way. And, you, and they can see that what their belief and what they're doing and what their soul's mission is, it's helping, but it's in this abstract form. And it's not counting the, the benefits, how many people read my article, but they're seeing the Jupiterian bigger picture of the abstract benefits that, and they're happy to be a part of that and they're happy to do their mission. So this example is just to show that they are living their inspiration and they, and Jupiter is helping the sun because they're seeing that there are, there's going to be, there's value and worth in doing it. And it's benefiting a larger amount of people, even if it's causing them to not personally benefit from it. So now let's say you have a strong sun, but a weak Jupiter, or a Jupiter that's not interacting with the sun through a strong aspect or the sun is not in Jupiter's signs. There's this feeling that as you're living your life's work, it feels more difficult and it feels more cruel and that there are all of these sacrifices, but the returns on making those sacrifices aren't really generating a lot of positivity to yourself. Or you, maybe you don't feel like you're actually, what you're doing has a greater purpose to it. And that may or may not be true, but the, per the person in this situation doesn't feel like their mission, their soul's work has a greater purpose to it. And it's the kind of investigative journalist that is having these doubts whether they're helping move anything forward at all. And so what happens is that a sensation of despair can come into play when you don't feel like you can see the bigger purpose of why things are happening as they happen from a more abstract level. And that's what Jupiter does. So Jupiter is really the opposite of despair and in and of itself. But when Jupiter's weak or when Jupiter isn't helping the sun, you're not able to get this bigger picture, this bigger purpose to your soul's mission. And this is what creates the kind of non-spiritual or atheistic approach to life. Because what that really is at its core, is the inability to see the abstract levels of meaning and how they relate to you. So when Jupiter is strong and it's helping out the sun, take the example of children. Jupiter is the planet of children. And because we create, it's the ultimate thing to create is another person. And Jupiter is this planet of abundance and creativity. So when you're creating a child, the sun understands that it has to sac make sacrifices for those children. And Jupiter also is... You, a person has this deep sense of purpose. Children give parents a, a purpose to do and make things happen to take care of these people so that eventually those people can inherit whatever they're building. So you see how they all work synergistically. The sun sacrificing for a betterment of a kingdom to grow things outside of you or to create a world, a stable world around you. 
Jupiter creating the abundance within that world and seeing a deeper purpose to your life and creating uh, the, the sense of spreading goodness and having a sense of growth around you and a sense of wealth. Children are a source of wealth when you think about them in terms of a long-term um, benefit to the world and making their lives beneficial. So there's that sacrificial aspect and there's the meaning that children give parents to their life when there's a healthy relationship between the sun and Jupiter in, in your consciousness. So the sun really loves it when Jupiter is giving a strong aspect or when the sun's in Jupiter signs because it helps the sun grow and expand its soul-driven mission and develop this big picture and spiritual understanding for the soul to actually feel good about itself and the mission uh, that it's, it's embarking on. And it gives a more profound meaning to life that is beyond just that singular solar purpose. It puts the uh, meaning of life into a larger context.